Hey everybody, welcome to another video. I paid £71 for two Xbox Series S motherboards off eBay. And today I'm going to try and fix one of them. So the reason I'm only going to try and fix one is purely because I don't know what's wrong with them. They were sold as purely faulty and beyond repair. So that's what the listing said. It said that they deemed them as unrepairable and that they should only be used for parts, which is fine because I'll sell these parts off these boards on my online store, same as shills, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, it's fine. But at the same time, I do want to at least try and get them working. If nothing else, just for a bit of fun, and um, you know, let's see if we can get them to boot. Let's see if we can get them to work. Who knows? Uh, so they do come with a SSD, and that's it. That's all they come with. So it's literally just a couple of boards, uh, with the SSDs and that's pretty much it so nothing really to tell on that but yeah I don't know what's wrong with them so I've got to try and figure that out first but it looks to me like not a lot's been done to the actual boards they look fairly clean one of them looks like it's had some prior repair attempts on the HDMI port in the past but other than that who knows they might they might work they might not I don't know but with that being said, if you are new to the channel and you like this type of content, I would really appreciate it if you hit subscribe and turn on the bell notifications, that way you don't miss any future videos. If you do want to organise a repair, check out the website in the video description, consolefix.co.uk. You can book a repair, you can send it over, and hopefully I'll be able to fix yours as well. And if you do want to support me, you can head over to Twitch and become a Twitch Prime subscriber by linking an Amazon Prime account. And that way, it doesn't cost you anything to do, but it does massively help me out. Just link an Amazon Prime account, subscribe to my Twitch channel, and I'll get around about $2.50 for everyone that does it. It massively, massively helps me out. It allows me to buy stuff like this, and even though these ones wasn't that expensive, there's a massive video coming up that cost me £900, so make sure that you get subscribed for that one. So with that being said, first of all, a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by PCBWay. Whether you're starting a small project to keep yourself busy or you're looking to launch a brand new product into the world, PCBWay have got you covered. Your project can go from idea to reality with services including PCB prototyping, bomb management, mass production and even CNC or 3D printing your final product. PCB production starts from just $5 for 10 one to two layer boards with professional PCB assembly starting at as little as just $30. Check out the link in the video description to learn more. Now let's get back to fixing this PlayStation 5. Right, we are. So, I really don't have a clue what's wrong with either of these. They, like I said, were sold on eBay as faulty. Both of them come with the SSD. And, yeah, I mean, the SSDs are paired on these anyway, so they need the SSD. So hopefully the, these are the correct ones. I'm not 100% sure, but fingers crossed they're the correct ones. But, I don't have a clue which one to go for. So, I'm going to flip a coin. Uh, yeah, let's flip a coin. So, that one, so we've got on, on a UK coin, if you're not from the UK, we've got uh, the Queen's head, which is soon to be the King's head. Um, in fact, the 50 pence coins have recently been changed, I think. But, yeah, Queen's head, and then you've got um, some weird monarch picture. I don't know. But, that being said, um, we call this heads and we call this tails, so we're going to play a game of heads or, t heads or tails. If it lands on heads, we'll pick this one. If it lands on tails, we'll pick this one. Ready? Tails. Okay. Okay, let's pick this one. So it's the one with the green SSD. So we're going to work on this. So the first thing we're going to need to do is obviously figure out what's wrong with it. So to do that, I'm going to need to build it into a console. Just like Neil Buchanan from Art Attack. Shout out to all of the people who remember Art Attack from when we were kids. Here's what I made earlier. So this is a Xbox Series S which I fixed on a recent video. And obviously I haven't done, done anything with it yet. So let's, uh, let's take it apart. Let's use these parts to have a look what's wrong with this one, shall we? So this one fully works. This Series S. Um, I'm actually thinking about stripping this down for parts to be honest because I know I can put another console out there in the wild but at the same time I can make more long term by stripping them down for parts and not only that it's not just about the money it's about the fact that 
How many consoles can I help to fix by providing parts for them? Like little chips that you can't buy. Exactly. Exactly. So, I'm going to put that to one side so I don't lose it. Because, like I said, I've recently fixed it and I don't want to end up losing it and not realising which one it is. So, first thing I'm going to do is just clean off the thermal pasta off here. I don't need to worry about this side because that's fresh thermal pasta. I can just put a little bit more on this one. But yeah, I can sell this board. If I get these working, I can sell these boards for what? £120 if I'm lucky. I can strip it down. I can sell the SSD for £60 straight away. So that's half my money back. And then you've got the safe bridge, which is, you know, £40. For the safe bridge, you've got the HDMI encoder, that's another £40. You've got the ESDIC, that's another £40. And you cannot buy those chips at all. So you can't buy that chip and you can't buy that chip at all. So, yeah, that's two consoles that can be fixed, you know, for the sake of one. So you're already at a win there. Um, and then you've got the MOSFETs. I can't buy those MOSFETs yet, as far as I'm aware. Um, you know, that's potentially, you know, five nine consoles that can be fixed um you know for, for sacrificing one so yeah it is worth just stripping them down purely for the parts more than anything i think so let's pop the x clamp back on not going to take much to build this and get it to a point where we can test it there we go. Not that I know where my front panel is, you know, my power button and stuff. But uh, I'm sure I can bodge it. Bodge it and run. That's my motto. By the way, if you're wondering, I've just noticed it's on the screen and I'm not changing it now. If you're wondering what this is, this is his? Yeah, if you're wondering what this is down here, uh, when I'm live streaming, I do uh, count all donations towards uh, a new shed fund for a new workshop. So if you want to contribute to that, you're more than welcome. There'll be a link in the top in comment to it. If you do want to, if you do want to contribute, I'm actually I've got I've got that loaded because I'm live streaming right after this video. So yeah. So there you go. If you're wondering what that is, that's what that is. So yeah, pretty self-explanatory when he says new shed fund, I suppose. But uh, never mind. Let's try and bodge this, shall we? Um, by bodge, that's a UK slang term for you know. Let's. Um, Let's just jerry-rig it. Right, so what happens with this then? So I've plugged it in. Oh. Okay. Look at that, my power cable is slowly falling. So it looks like it looks like it's a beep on beep off. Okay, yeah. So I can hear it kind of popping. So it looks like it's a beep on beep off. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check the SSD, and I'm going to see if the SSD is good, because that's probably one of the most common causes of a beep on beep off on the Xbox Series S. So I've got a little reader here, and this little reader, sorry about knocking the camera there, but that this little reader allows me to plug in a M2 drive, a PCI Express M.2 drive, and convert it to USB so I can read it on the computer and just see basically what's wrong with it, or if there's anything wrong with it. And okay, that's actually reading as good. I'm just going to wait and load up and see what the status is in terms of read and write and stuff. Look at that, 16 terabytes of writes, Jesus. That's a lot of terabytes. There we go. And that's uh, a lot of reads. Ha! 14,718 hours. Wow. One year, 248 days, six hours. Okay, well, the good thing is it's reading okay, right? It's absolutely fine. So, yeah, we've got ourselves a working SSD. That's good. So, we do have a board issue by the look of it. All right, fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hunt through some power rails. I'm going to see what power rails are there, what power, what, uh, what are meant to be there, and what are not there, sort of thing. 
Basically, I'm going to try and find enemies in Power Gales. Okay, yeah, that might be easier to explain. If, and that's, this is a big if. Oh, hold on a minute. Why do we have a missing MOSFET? Okay, well, all right, I've just noticed something. <laughs> okay, let's pop under the scope then and we'll... <laughs> the big if was me getting the fan off. But uh, I keep fannying around. Uh -huh. Got him. Okie dokie. Uh, let's get it under the microscope. I've just noticed we've got some burning around here with a missing MOSFET, so... Yeah. Let's take a look around there, shall we? Shall we? Shall we? And... Okay, well... Yeah, I think that might be a little bit of a problem, don't you? Ha! <laughs> uh, so we've got some definite damage to one of the MOSFETs here. It looks like it's gone a little bit kaboom. Um, okay, well, let's see if we can clean some of this up then. Um, it comes to something when you're not even phased by this kind of stuff anymore, because I'm just so used to seeing it. So, we've definitely got some burning to the MOSFET here, so to this MOSFET here. So, we've got some carbonisation underneath, and hmm, this might not actually be repairable. Um, yeah, I think what we're going to have to do is just grind, grind a bit of this away and pull back some of these layers and just see how far down it actually goes. See, the problem is, when you've got a carbonised track like this, or a carbonised layer, that carbon is then conductive, so what tends to happen is it can, tends to conduct with any surrounding layers. And obviously that's not good because layers are meant to be separate. Honestly, that don't look that bad though. Not really. I mean, it's bad, it's pretty rough, but it's not too bad. I think that needs to come off. So it's going to be a little bit awkward for me because the new camera I'm using, I'm waiting for an attachment to come. Um, so I'm having to look through a screen at the minute to be able to see. And I'm not used to it at all. So just a word of warning there. I've got my hot air set at 480 degrees Celsius, 20% airflow. It's heat seized on there, that is. Wham boozled. I'm going to remove the cap that's next to it as well. I'm usually a little bit more accurate than this, but I'm actually looking off to the side as well, so it's not easy. Yeah, these are pretty much heat sealed on. There you go. All right, so that's that. So what I've done there is just remove those components because there's a good likelihood that they're shorted, so rather than wasting time, just remove them anyway. It's just easier. And next I'm going to grab a new pair of tweezers because I want to try and peel back some of this layer. And I need the tweezers to close, basically. So let's just see what we can do. So the tweezers I'm using, they don't quote close all the way, which means... I can't really get a grip on the layer because it's so thin. I mean, these are, you know, a few millimetres in diameter. So I just grabbed a new pair just to make my life a little bit easier. Let's just spin this board round. So we can see it's a little bit better here, this side. So it's a little bit clearer. Right, okay, that's a little bit clearer to see, and you can you can see some carbonation carbonization there. So yeah, that doesn't look like it goes too far, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. So I think I'm gonna have to grind some of this away to be able to see just how bad the damage is. Hopefully it's not too bad, and hopefully the layer underneath is just ground. The problem with this is that, you know the the more carboni carbonisation you get, the hotter it gets, the hotter it gets, the more carbonisation you get, and it just puts itself into a vicious cycle of, you know, just basically making itself worse. It's self-destruction mode once it starts, and it just does not stop. 
and it will not stop until it gets resolved. Alright, so I think it's time to do a little bit of grinding with the grinding pen and we'll see what we can do with it, I guess. Right, so what I'm going to do then, I've got a little grinding pen here. It's only a cheap one, but it does the job. But I've got a little grinding pen with a little attachment on it. And I'm just going to try and basically grind away at some of this just to, well, get rid of this carbonisation, really. So, yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory. I'm going to put it on the low setting and see how that fares up. It looks huge, obviously, this little grinding pen does, but it's not that big. I mean, it is actually quite a big grinding pen because I was using it to grind a port. Might need it on a better setting than that. So ultimately what I'm trying to do here is just separate layers and try and relieve the short. Once I've done that I might be able to re rebuild the circuit. Right, let's see. Let's clean that up. Let's see how that looks. So it's quite a mild attachment I've got on that at the minute. Okay, so let's just check that. Let's pop into continuity mode on the multimeter and we'll see if we've got a short to ground on that circuit or on that trace rather. So we've got a ground point here. So continuity mode is going to beep when I complete a circuit. So if I pop one probe on ground and then pop the other probe on the trace, um, we've actually got no short there now. I don't know if that's normal, whether that's meant to read, uh, read short to ground. Some MOSFETs do. This is obviously the source. Um, and then we've got the gate here and we've got the drain here. So it's the drain what appeared to be short. I don't know what that's meant to read. But at the minute it is reading short so... I think I'm going to grind a bit more of that away, actually, just to try and, well, basically take the edge off it. So I think I'm going to grind a little bit more away on the source of this MOSFET. And any components are damaged, I can always replace from a donor board. How's that looking? Let's have a look. I could always test that on a donor board and see how it's meant to look or how it's meant to behave. There we go, we've got some of that layer up there now. Just going to dig underneath it. Because I want to make sure that we're not shorted the ground. It doesn't matter if I cut some of this layer away. As long as we've got a little bit of a, a contact on it, then it doesn't really matter. Let's have a look now. Let's see how that reacts in uh, continuity mode now and then... I can check it against a donor board while I'm grabbing some parts. So one probe on ground again. So I've got a probe just here. And yep, yeah, that's no short. How about the gate? Can I never check the gate? That's fine. That seems okay. And that does still appear short. Uh whether it actually is, I don't know. However, I can't see anywhere where it would be short. Not not immediately, anyway. Uh, okay, well, I could always check the schematic as well and see what that's connected to. So we've got Q4 on there. So let me get the schematic for thee. So... Here's the schematic then. Uh, so the code name for the Xbox Series S was Stockton. And if we just do a quick PDF search for Q4. And we've got apparently one of 37 matches. So let's find something a bit more specific then. So we've got Q4. 
a component nearby R332. Okay. There we go. One of one match. Yeah. Q4. It's a Aon 7403. 12 volt standby gate load switch. Nominal voltage 12 gold. Uh, 12 gold? 12 volt. 12 volt. I'll get it right. 12 volt. So we got 12 volt input. All right. Uh, no, sorry, VREG 1P1 active enable. Uh, that turns the MOSFET on. Blah, 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 blah. Then we get 12 volts. Okay, all right. So, cool. So, the source could show up as short if that's a uh, 1.1 um, volt enable line. It could definitely show up as, as uh, low impedance or short to ground or something. So, yeah, okay, well, yeah, let's just find a donor board for it then. So here's a donor board, and this is what it's meant to look like. Let's just get that. So we've got Q4 there, R332, etc., etc. So that's what it's supposed to look like. And yeah, compared to the one that, we, that we're working on, that's a far cry from normal. So yeah, all right. Let's just have a look at this. Let's just see what's meant to be read on here. So I've got one probe on ground here. Actually, let's do it the same leads. So I had black on ground, red on the source. Uh, no, it's not meant to show up as short at all. So we've still got a short on there, so it's pointless putting any components on. But what I am going to do is inject one, uh, one volt into that 1.1 volt line. And we will see what's going on. So I'm going to do this without the microscope because... I need to be able to see what I'm doing, and it's a little bit awkward. And plus, I need the thermal camera as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to permanently clamp one of my leads onto ground. I say permanently, just while I'm doing the voltage injection. So voltage injection is essentially going to force some current through the system, and that's going to basically give me an indication as to where the short is. And the reason for that is because when you... When you inject voltage or when you put power through something, electricity is always going to want to take the path with the least resistance to ground. So it's going to want to flow through with the least resistance to ground. It kind, it's kind of like it's kind of like driving to work. You essentially want to take the path with the least traffic. You don't want to be delayed, and the, that's what the electricity wants. It wants to just get through. It wants to go. It wants to do its thing. So it takes the path with the least resistance. Google Maps basically redirects it and says, right, this is a faster route, take this one. And that's essentially what this does. So we'll inject one volt, and because it will take the path with the least resistance, that's of course going to be this line here, this 1.1 volt line here, but it's going to go through that shorty component wherever that may be, and then that's going to get hot, because it's going to be like, oh damn, I don't like all this current, and the component's going to get hot. So that's going to give us an indication. So I'm going to use a the thermal camera. I've got my bench supply set to 1 volt. And I've got 5 amps of current. What is short? It appears it's something here. Is it the layer? So the reason for that is because it looks to me like it's very close to where my probe is. So I can do this under the scope and what I can do uh, I don't like the, look, like the look of that cap on C3, but what I can do is rather than using the thermal camera, because it looks so close to the probe, I can just do that look. Haha, -ha, hello. So, a little bit of isopropyl alcohol, whatever gets hot is going to cause the IPA to evaporate. And yeah, that cap don't look good, does it? So, if we ping that cap off, you're not going to see this in real time. That short's just gone. Yeah, that short's just gone. Let me show you the thermal camera now. So immediately, I've got my probe in the same place, and immediately, that's just cleared that short. Look at that. Now there's no short there anymore. Like one cap has caused all of that. But that being said, this is fixable. This appears to be fixable. That 1.1 volt line is now no longer short. 
And if I use a donor board now, I should be able to rebuild that circuit. I'm going to put some conformal coating on that area which I've dug away and cleared the carbonisation and things. But I should be able to restore this entire area. The key word here is should. I might be getting a little bit ahead of myself here, but it's looking good. I know it looks rough, but it's not as bad as it looks, I promise you. The carbonisation wasn't actually that bad, so basically all I've done is took the top layer off where it was starting to carbonise. It didn't get to a point where it had actually gone through to the next layer, so I can just push this back down, essentially. I can put a little bit of conformal coating around it just to protect this part here, and then I can rebuild this drain pin for the MOSFET. So conformal coating, that's essentially a UV glue and it protects the board from shorting out on anything else or protects components, protects anything from shorting out really on anything else and it cures with UV light. It's really, really cheap. The part number for this, if you want to search it on eBay, I don't sell it on my store because, well, quite frankly, there's no profit in it and I'm a money-grabbing YouTuber. So, yeah, the part number for this, if you do want to buy it, is UVH900. You can buy it on eBay. You know, there's quite a few places you can get it. But what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to... Well, there's a bit too much there, so I'm going to have to clear that up. But, basically just drop a bit of that on there. I'm going to clear a little bit of it up with a cotton swab. I'm just going to dab a little bit up. And then I'm going to spread it back out a little bit. I'm going to dab a little bit more up, because there's still way too much on there. Honestly, this stuff lasts forever though. I've had this tub for about four years and it's not even halfway empty. I might have to buy some more in five years time. That's more like it, that's better. Yeah, that's about right. So, like I said, I'm going to basically protect this area. I want to protect the substrate. So the way that the boards are built up is you've got a top and a bottom layer, but in between you've got some internal layers. Usually between, you know, 4 and 12 layers depending on the complexity of the board. I think these ones are around about 6 or 8 layers. But in between each layer, obviously because it's copper, uh, you know, the traces are all copper, it needs to be protected with something. So it's protected with a fiberglass substrate. And that's what you see in there with that, you know, that grey area that I was digging around. That's the substrate, and if that gets exposed, it can potentially cause a short between two layers, which is why I ground away that carbonisation, because I didn't want it to short between two layers. And I also didn't want the carbonisation to eat through the substrate and hit another layer, because then that's going to cause a lot of resistance between the top layer and the layer underneath. And that would just obviously make it worse. And it, it kind of has this domino effect where it just keeps on falling, it keeps on getting worse. And we obviously don't want that, so... Yeah, I dug away at it, cleaned up the substrate, made sure that there's no carbonisation around and then now I can re-protect it and rebuild it, hopefully. So I'm going to put some UV light on here. No, this will not hurt your eyes. Anyone who says it is, or anyone who says it does, is more than. Sorry, but they are. Um, no, there was a running gag on uh, another channel where someone was complaining about UV light coming through the camera. It can't come through the camera. So it's not going to hurt your eyes by looking at it. So you can kind of see this going hard already. Can you see that? These UV lights are really strong. I will be stocking these on my website in a couple of weeks. These UV lights. Man, this video is one big ad. Didn't you know? Consolefix.shop. One thing you can do to speed up the process is just add a little bit of heat to it. And that should be absolutely rock solid and nicely protected now. Let's take a look, shall we? Yep. Nicely protected, so nothing's going to get through that, and now I can start to rebuild this circuit.
yeah, I'm going to say it looks shit. But that is more sufficient than a jumper wire. That's for sure. That is way more sufficient than a jumper wire. Let's, let's give this bad boy a test, shall we? That's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I love it. I like it a lot. So, yeah, not going to worry about cleaning that up. Let's just give it a test. Let's put it all back together. And we'll see what happens with it, shall we? If it don't work now, it's not going to work. Some of my finest work right there. Okay, well, it looks like heads and tails picked a fun one to start with. So, I'm happy with that. I like to work on some of these more fun consoles, to be honest. Let's pop a fan on there. Keep it cool. Cool. Beautiful. See what I did there? Ah, I'll see myself out. And we're going to get a boot. Oh, yes, we got a fan spin. Is it going to turn on and work? That's the question. We've got a fan spin, but does it work? I'm going to get a HDMI cable ready. Uh, haven't got one set up to my capture card at the minute, so it'll do like this, all right? I'm just going to run a cable straight from my monitor. It'll do the job. I'm going to bridge the pins. Ooh! Oh, something just popped. Uh-oh. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. Well, that was no fun. It was just the X-clamp. Ah. Oh. I thought something went boom then. That would have been a good video. I like it when things go boom on video. It's fun. <laughs> oh, I thought we was going to have a nice shocker then. Is it turning on? No. Oh, man. We had a fan spin as well. Unless something else has blown. Oh, man. Well, you suck. So I'm just going to look around. I'll have a look around here, um, you know, in the immediate area, first of all. Just see if there's anything else I can see. Uh, unless, unless we do need all three of those pins to be connected. But as far as I know, they're all connected internally. So, yeah, I can't see that being it. Let me just check in diode mode on that MOSFET and just see what we get in terms of readings let's see if we get a normal reading on there so diode mode is going to give me a voltage drop across the ground and tell me an accurate reading ignore the beep uh, so red probe on ground we've got 2.7 volts on that side uh, that might not be connected that mosfet might not be connected that could be it i thought that was sufficient but evidently not So I'm going to push down on this. Could be that it's just sitting a little bit too high. I did see that blob, I'm not concerned. Right, let's test that again quickly. 1.13. Uh, 0.3, yep, getting a good reading there. 0.35, yeah, okay. I'm getting good readings there now. Let's test it again. There's a fan spin. Now is it going to work? Oh yeah, that's working baby, let's go. Come on, spin up baby, there we go. That's what I'm talking about, let's go. Oh, if only you could see the smile on my face right now. Oh wait, you can. That's working baby. Let's get it, let's go. So a blown MOSFET caused some carbonisation on this one and uh, the grinding pen that I use is a cheap Amazon one. It's actually no good for what I bought it for. I bought it to modify Nintendo Switch ports to fit, fit Nintendo Switch lights but it's perfect for grinding away at a board so I guess I'm not sending it back. <laughs> this thing has just made me some money. So yeah, happy days. I am super super happy. This works absolutely fine. Um, well, it appears to work fine. It needs a full test, obviously. I need to make sure it stays on. I need to make sure it performs as it should. But it is working. And that's a win. And uh, that's what it's all about, right? So, yeah. I, I'm really happy. We've still got another one to work on. 
Uh, still got this one. Make sure you get subscribed because we're going to be working on this one next. Hopefully we can do two out of two. But I've just doubled my money just by getting that working. I'll pay £71 for these. Uh, shut up, phone. I'll pay £71 for these. And I've already made about £140 by getting that working. So hopefully we can double that and get this one working as well. But that is absolutely fantastic. A little bit of carbonisation. Dig with a, a little grinding pen. Um, basically bodge it and run. And uh, it's working, so happy days. So that's going to be for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you do have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comment section down below, as always. And if you do want to organise a repair, I do offer them to the public. So, yeah, consolefix.co.uk, book it in, get it sent in, and I will do my best to get it repaired. If you do want to support me, you can head over to Twitch and become a Twitch Prime subscriber by linking an Amazon Prime account to Twitch, and then subscribing to my channel absolutely free. I've been talking a little bit too much. I need a cup of coffee. Uh, yeah, thank you very much to PCBWay for sponsoring this video, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Take care, everyone. Bye for now.